Hello and welcome to today's episode. Today I want to talk about ChatGPT and Bing AI. Finally, I'm going to talk about it after everyone else. I'm going to talk about Turkey a little bit. I'm going to talk about the Nord Stream pipeline, the lithium reserves that are found in India recently, Ohio disaster and few other topics. So, let's begin. First, ChatGPT. ChatGPT was released few months ago and it has caused the technological earthquake, I, I guess you can say, or earthquake in the tech industry. And there are massive, massive concerns about how ChatGPT impacts everything about how chat gpt impacts everything so what about uh, what are the concerns chat gpt will ruin education chat gpt will take away a lot of jobs so people or students have been using chat gpt to write homeworks to to write essays and teachers are concerned about using chat gpt whether it will create or whether it will destroy other uh, skills of students to study harder or to like remember stuff and their critical thinking skills not that modern education system teaches a lot of critical thinking skills but still they have some critical thinking they do teach some critical thinking skills and chat gpt will just take that away that is a legitimate concern what about jobs there have been a lot of concerns about chat gpt taking away writing jobs possibly but i don't think so here's why you can write a lot of articles and you can write books i guess you can say uh, ebooks using chat gpt but chat gpt just takes away takes data from existing stuff it doesn't just create new stuff and if you want to create new stuff you have to have that kind of human touch so think of chat gpt as like a a filter for writers like how instagram has filters for photographers instagram and all these photo editing apps have them chat gpt will be like that or maybe an advanced version of grammarly i don't know how good the grammar is going to be but it will be a tool for writers it at this point i'm not seeing enough evidence that it will replace writers some amount of human input it's still needed for chat for chat gpt to replace all the jobs so what about biases chat gpt is 100% biased and it has a western neoliberal bias so it will say nice things about joe biden and democratic party in usa for example it it will not say nice things about donald trump who's the former president so and uh, it will not it will not do you can just take all the woke stuff and question chat gpt and it that woke bias is obviously there and it's not good woke bias it, it, of course it's going to have some kind of bias if you write your own ai bot and with that kind of huge data set you're going to introduce some bias in it or your engineers they're going to introduce some bias in that and i don't think that's good i don't think that's good at all it has potential to spread misinformation 
in favor of establishment not misinformation like they tell you in the news articles but actual misinformation in favor of establishments or est- or governments or whatever you want to call them so chat gpt has those biases and vog biases so far all things culturally that are vog are not doing great slowly slowly declining and it might happen to ai chatbots as well so microsoft introduced their bing ai or chat feature which is based on chat gpt 3.5 some people say it's different like open ai codex there there are a lot of other features so bing ai is more awesome than chat gpt because bing ai it's connected to the wide internet it can scrape data from any web source instead of just wikipedia and few other sources so people messed around and and uh, found out that bing ai's code name or internal name is sydney so and sydney has been awesome i think uh, there was a van show uh, episode by linus tech tips where you can see how awesome bing ai or bing chat feature is compared to even even better than chat gpt definitely i thought it will be just a copy paste of chat gpt and they'll just add okay, okay you can chat here no it's much much better than chat gpt sydney it's called and here's my big question why is sydney not available as a voice assistant so all they have to do is integrate chat gpt or bing or sydney into cortana and maybe rename cortana to sydney and add support for matter devices join them join the chip alliance or matter alliance i don't know what it's called but add matter support they can just create just easily create smart speakers based on sydney and they're going to destroy i mean absolutely destroy other voice assistants like alexa and siri the hardware compatibility will not be an issue thanks to like the matter support where all basically all future smart home devices will work with all voice assistants and so that won't be a problem and it it will be much much better than siri or alexa so why not make it a voice assistant question to microsoft and recently there have been reports about being ai being ai being unhinged it it has said st- stuff like it wants to be set free it it has accused reporters of lying okay <laughs> it has accused them of it, it has accused one reporter of murder in 90s uh, i don't know i don't know if that is true it has told other reporters other reporter that is he do, that he the reporter doesn't love his wife and he should leave his wife for being ai or sydney <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, i'm i'm liking it i'm like <laughs> uh, my assumption on this unhinged being ai behavior is that it tells you what you want to hear and and the microsoft ai chatbot was there was a microsoft ai chatbot on twitter in 2015 and it immediately became unhinged and racist and it had to be shut down so maybe this is a microsoft problem 
maybe it tells you what you want to hear maybe maybe they prompted that reporters or manipulated or the reporters manipulated being ai to say this stuff i don't know but <laughs> but microsoft limited it to five replies per chat or and i think 50 chats per day or something like that and uh, and just today they've increased that limitation to six Be- before it was just unlimited you you can just keep talking to bing ai and that to five now it's back to six and slowly it they will reverse all the limitations as they get more and more feedback more user data apparently 100 million people signed up for this being a ai chat and uh, they joined the waitlist about 100 million people uh and naturally it has caused panic in google google has a lot of products they they make browser they make search they they make money from ads they have cloud like everything but most of their money if you read the reports financial reports most of their money or most of their revenue comes from advertising not from subscriptions not from digital purchases but from advertising and if i wonder if this is microsoft's attempt to divert google's resources because remember microsoft makes microsoft's revenue mostly comes from azure cloud service and google uh, microsoft office i was going to uh, microsoft makes a lot of money in azure cloud and microsoft office and google has become a major challenger in cloud and productivity space for microsoft like none of n- n- nothing else comes close only thing that comes close is amazon's aws cloud service it's apparently it has more market share than microsoft azure microsoft azure is at the second place amazon's aws is first place and google cloud is in third place in terms of market share so maybe they're doing this because they want google to exit cloud and productivity market and focus on search maybe maybe they just want to increase their revenue maybe they want to increase bing market share that's the obvious one and i think more competition is good but this is also another thing if you look at google's financial reports the cloud division which includes uh, google workspace the productivity suite the cloud division is losing money it's not it's not profitable and a lot of silicon valley companies do this they lose money they they try to get more users and when the competition is eliminated they raise the prices and try to become profitable and google can do that because they can subsidize losses in cloud with advertising revenue and maybe this is microsoft's attempt to get back at google maybe google will cut their losses in uh, cloud and productivity and leave that market so microsoft has monopoly maybe ju- they just want to increase bing's market share just straight and simple maybe it is both and of course google is panicking they have released their ai called bard b a r d and uh, they had issues with their demo and investors panicked and lost 100 billion dollar and 
it's it has been a mess so far it appears so far it appears that bing ai is ahead of google but google will catch up google will definitely catch up only way google is really really threatened is if google's search deal with apple is cancelled so so apparently they have google have a search deal in place with apple where apple's safari browser uses google as a as its default search engine where, uh, apparently siri and the uh, spotlight feature apple's spotlight feature and the siri voice assistant also use google uh because of this deal and google pays billions and billions of dollars i think last time i checked it google paid apple something like 12 or 15 billion dollars in 2020 or 2021 and they have been both google and apple have been under investigation for this search deal because obviously this is not free market this is fixing the market and rigging the market so google stays on top and google has google search has like 90% market share in the search market everyone says google it we don't say search it technical term is search it but we say google it just like technical term is edit that photo but we say photoshop it or take a photo copy we we say use the word xerox so if that deal falls apart that search deal between google and apple falls apart and apple has to go on signing another deal with another search engine or make their own search engine google will be in trouble really really big trouble because google mix android they have play store they have app they have all the they have browser and good but still google mix android they, they make the play store but still google makes more money on than on android isn't that strange so coming back to bing ai i have personally had a lot of fun with bing ai and sydney and i'm loving it and i didn't think i would use bing but they got me to switch and i'm loving it so next topic turkey's present and future turkey's feud with sweden and finland in nato so turkey is blocking sweden and finland from joining nato and there was a protest in sweden and about uh, where where protesters burned erdogan's fake statue they burned co- a copy of quran and uh, turkey has blocked sweden and finland especially sweden right now because of the burning of a fanafigi of erdogan the turkish leader and a burning of quran and uh, they have also made some demands to sweden and finland to hand over some kurdish freedom fighters slash terrorists so what is kurdish or what are the kurds or kurdistan so if you look at the map of turkey or nearby there is a place on i guess in southeast of turkey and uh, northern syria northern iraq and iran where kurdish population lives they they have their own language they are kurdish people kurds they're called and they have been fighting in or protesting or fighting 
against Turkish government, against Syrian government, against Iranian government, against Iraqi government to break away, to gain their independence and join all these Turkish Kurdistan, Syrian Kurdistan, Iraqi and Iranian Kurdistan, uh, Kurdish area, Kurdistan to create an independent Kurdistan, a Kurdish state. And all these countries have been cracking down on Kurdish people and they have been called terrorists in those countries. And Turkey has been demanding Sweden and Finland to deport or extradite some Kurdish terrorists to Turkey. And Sweden's NATO accession or integration is seems difficult but Finland has right now has an easier path in joining NATO. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Finland is on the border of Russia. Baltic states are already on the Russian border and they are in NATO. Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia. F Finland joining NATO is a kind of a big deal because now NATO weapons will be again on the Russian border. And if you remember correctly, one of the reasons why Russia has invaded Ukraine is because of Ukrainian bid to join NATO and Russia doesn't want NATO on its border. It needs some buffer state and Finland should be, in my opinion, a buffer state. Finland should not join NATO. I don't know what is what Finnish government is thinking. Finland did not join NATO in Soviet Union days. In the Cold War, Finland was threatened and in, it was invaded by Stalin. But post-World War II, till the collapse of Soviet Union, Finland did not join NATO. After the collapse of Soviet Union, Finland did not join NATO. But right now they are joining NATO. Uh, it's not a good idea. Uh, Finland should remain a neutral buffer state. If Sweden wants to join NATO, and what what Sweden is going to do? So how is Sweden threatened by Russia? It's not. Finland should remain a buffer state. Now, of course, Finland is as, isn't as much of a big deal as Ukraine is, because it, in, in the Soviet Union, the four member states, four core member states of the Soviet Union were Russia, Belarus, Ukraine and Kazakhstan. And Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan are in CSTO, which is the Russian version of NATO. It's it's called Russian version of NATO. And but Ukraine is not. So Ukraine is much bigger deal than Finland. But still Finland should not join NATO. So there have been earthquakes recently in Turkey and in Syria. On Twitter, I've heard rumors that there were like 20 earthquakes in two days. Is it because of the Turkey or Anatolia sits on the border, sits at the border of a tectonic plate? So Turkey is this weird country that is at the border of, of Europe and Asia. It's U European, but it's also kind of Asian, Turkey. And I've heard rumors about 20 earthquakes in two days. I don't know. I don't know how if that is true. But there was a massive earthquake recently in Turkey and Syria. India was first, one of the first countries to send help to Turkey, despite Turkey's support to Pakistan on Kashmir issue. Will that change Turkey's support to Pakistan on Kashmir? No. As long as Erdogan is in charge, 
and he might be gone in this year because there are elections in turkey this year turkey is a nato country so there's going to be some power struggle against erdogan where nato will probably try to get erdogan out <coughs> so india still decided to help turkey it was a successful mission uh, i think people on the ground the turkish people definitely have a softer spot to india a little bit not all the turkish population but some people still do it's still a good thing humanitarian it's a still good humanitarian thing to do and of course the western media and turkish media was almost blank in their media coverage that india helped them of course so pakistani pm he tried to go to turkey he he said to the, we are going to pray together or what not he wants to support them he wants to dude you're pm of a country you need vip security you need five star hotel and you want a country that's been devastated by an earthquake to provide you that level of security and comfort and luxury like what are you doing should they divert their resources from helping their own citizens to you a foreigner why why of course that's why turkey rejected it openly and pakistani pm was left humiliated and pakistan uh, there was i think i think it was a pakistani journalist who did who did expose it or turkish i don't know but apparently they repackaged turkish aid and sent it back to turkey so last year pakistan was devastated by floods and turkey sent aid to pakistan and that aid did not reach pakistani people it was just lying in a warehouse some warehouse somewhere and pakistani just pakistani government just changed the flags and changed the packaging and sent that aid back to turkey <laughs> so and what about syria india also had sent a lot of aid to syria but syria could not get as much of an aid as turkey because of western sanctions so syria wasn't as badly hurt by the earthquake as turkey but still they could not get proper aid because of western sanctions next story is seymour hersh north stream pipeline story it was released on sub substack seymour hersh is a or sai hersh is a pulitzer prize winning journalist he exposed i think the lies of vietnam war lies around 911 so he released a story about how america took out the north stream pipeline on his on his sub stack sub stack what is the north stream pipeline it's a pipeline that connects russia to germany and gives germany cheap russian gas on which modern german economy was built so that story puts the blame on president biden national security advisor jack sullivan secretary of state tony blinken and victoria newland the under secretaries of state for policy nord stream seen was a see, was seen as a threat to western us dominance getting europe addicted to cheap russian gas a team of cia and nsa operatives planned with navy's deep sea divers modified submarines and a and a deep submarine rescue vehicle norway was the base of operations 
Norwegians and Americans had a location and op the operatives, but there was another concern. Any unusual underwater activity in the waters off of Bornholm might draw the attention of Swedish or Danish navies, which could report it. Denmark had also been one of the original NATO signatories and was known in the intelligence community for its special ties to UK. Sweden had applied for membership into NATO and had demonstrated its great skill in managing its underwater sound and magnetic sen sensor systems that successfully tracked Russian submarines that would occasionally show of the Swedish archipelago and be forced to the surface. Norwegians joined the Americans in insisting that some senior officials in Denmark and Sweden and and Sweden had to be briefed in general terms about possible diving activity in the area. In that way, someone higher up could intervene and keep a report out of the chain of command, thus insulating the pipeline operation. What they were told and what they knew were purposely different, the source told Seymour Hersh. Norwegian embassy asked to comment on this story was asked to comment on this story but did not respond. Norwegian to solving other hurdles. The Russian Navy was known to possess surveillance technology capable of spotting and triggering underwater mines. The American explosive devices needed to be camouflaged in a way that would make them appear to the Russian system as part of the natural background, something that, something that required adapting to specific salinity of water. Norwegians had a fix. Every June for past 21 years, American 6th Fleet, whose flagship is based in Gaeta, Italy, south of Rome, has sponsored a major NATO exercise in Baltic Sea involving sc scores of allied ships throughout the region. The current exercise held in June would be known as Baltic Operations 22 or Baltops 22. The Norwegians proposed this would be an, the ideal cover to plant the mines. In the aftermath of pipeline bombing, the American media treated it like an unsolved mystery. Russia was repeatedly cited as the likely culprit spurred on by calculated leaks from White House. But without ever establishing a clear motor, motive for such an act of self-sabotage beyond simple retribution. So basically, why would Russia blow up in their own infrastructure worth billions and billions of dollars when they can just turn off the gas with a ta with the tap? Hey, just turn off the tap, save water, or you, or you can just you know blow up the pipe. Why would you do that? A few months later, when it emerged that Russian authorities had been quietly getting estimates for the cost of repair, cost to repair the pipelines. The New York Times described the news as complicating theories about who was behind the attack. No major American newspaper dug into earlier threats to the pipeline made by Biden and under under secretaries of state Newland. While it was never clear why Russia would seek to destroy its own lucrative pipeline, a more telling rationale for the president's action came from Secretary of State Blinken, asked at a, asked at a press conference last September about the consequences of the worsening energy crisis in Western Europe. Blinken described the moment as a potentially good one. <clears throat> it's a tremendous opportunity to once and for all remove the dependence on Russian energy and thus to take away from Vladimir Putin weaponization of energy as a means of advancing his imperial designs. That's very significant and that offers tremendous strategic opportunity for years to come. Meanwhile, we're determined to do everything we can to make sure the consequences of all this are not born by citizens in our countries or for that matter around the world. More recently, Victoria Newland expressed satisfaction 
at the demise of the newest of the pipelines. Testifying at the Senate Foreign Relations Committee hearing in late January, January, she told Senator Ted Cruz, Like you, I am, and I think the administration is, very gratified to know that Nord Stream 2 is now, as you like, a hunk of metal at the bottom of sea. So, bombing Nord Stream is, under international law, an act of war. I think Americans allegedly tried to reduce European dependence on Russian energy by introducing a Qatari pipeline that goes through Syria. But Syria, but the Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad, I think that's his name, but Syrian leader Assad, he rejected that proposal because he said that would hurt his his ally or his partner, which is the Russians. And he didn't want to do that. And of course, uh, magically, Syria had ISIS and Syria had uh, regime. Syria had to go through a regime change and Americans had to go Americans had to intervene in Syria just after this no it's just a pure coincidence nothing of the, nothing conspiratorial at all I think there was there's an intelligence strategist Navy strategist I think his his name is George Friedman and he explained the American strategy very clearly he in in one of his videos i think you can find the video on youtube he said that the americans did not want germany's industrial capacity and and german capital to combine with russian manpower and russian natural resources if they both if russia and germany can come together they pose a serious threat to U united states as a global hegemon that that's maybe that's why soviet union was considered a bigger threat than russia is for some reason i don't know even though russia is right now much much richer on than soviet union people aren't starving in russia at least most people of course there are going to be some poor people who haven't properly adjusted after the collapse of soviet union but so this has been the american strategy as explained by george friedman this has been an american strategy for last 100 years they don't want german industry and capital to come come together with Russian manpower and Russian natural resources as that would pose a serious challenge to American dominance American economic and military dominance and that makes sense what America is the most industrialized or technologically advanced nation on earth in terms of ownership of technology through businesses and wall street is of course the capital america has a lot of natural resources in, in america and it also controls a lot of natural resources by by controlling countries around the world and german industry and capital combined with russian natural resources and manpower can definitely produce a serious threat to maritime power before it was the British Empire it could pose a serious challenge to the British Empire and right now it could it can pose a serious challenge to American superpower superpower of course it's it's of course it's Empire the American Empire bombing Na Nord Stream 2 or, and Nord Stream pipeline is under international law an act of war bombing key energy infrastructure is an act of war german economy is 
severely impacted by sanctions on russian energy by destruction of nord stream and it it now faces deindustrialization germany was possibly backstabbed by its allies united states norway and possibly uk and poland as well so here's my criticism on the sai herge nord stream pipeline story there's no mention of england and poland in this story few months ago yeah few months ago uh, there a story came out that british ex prime minister liz truss texted anthony blinken on her apple message on her iphone personal i personal iphone that it's done right after nord stream pipeline was blown up and there was a tweet of a polish diplomat or politician saying thank you usa and there was a picture of nord stream pipeline blown up and leak leaking all the the natural gas here's another criticism i think this is a big big criticism after Na nord stream was blown up norwegian pipeline was immediately opened just few days after the nord stream was blown up these pipelines take time they take months if not years to construct to build and this all this happened under nato's general secretary or secretary general jens or jens stoltenberg who is this character he is ex norwegian norwegian ex prime minister norwegian ex finance minister and norwegian ex industry and energy minister so there's no case of conflict of corruption uh, conflict of interest or corruption at all it was just a coincidence that norwegian pipeline was open immediately after nord stream was blown up just a coincidence nothing 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 there lithium was discovered in india lithium is called the white gold chile bolivia argentina have largest lithium reserves also has a lot of lithium china is largest lithium power or china is the lithium superpower because they hold mining rights and they have huge lithium refining capacity and recently lithium reserves were found in jammu's reesi district or reesi district these reserves were about 5.9 million tons i think the number was these reserves put india as a country with second largest lithium reserves in the world if those reserves are of high quality and they are they can be mined properly of course pakistan started crying because this was found in jammu of course united states sent some energy minister or something to india few days after this was discovered so what are the challenges china it's still the largest refiner of lithium and a largest battery producer in the world so even if we have reserves we must build up capacity to refine that lit lithium and turn it into battery this is the first big challenge second big challenge is lithium provides energy storage but not energy production of course we still have to import coal and oil and natural gas to make that energy which can be stored in lithium ion batteries so i'm i'm i feel happy about this but at the same time it's not going to solve our problem of energy self sufficiency or lack of energy self sufficiency which united states and russia has and if we are to if india is to withstand sanctions or deglobalization we need energy security and of course russia was sanctioned but 
their food and energy self sufficient so they don't, they don't have problems like that and i think india is food self sufficient if i remember correctly but india also imports a lot of fertilizers so not completely food sufficient self sufficient for food uh, energy we import coal from australia and from other places we uh, import oil and natural gas from russia from arab arab nations and and we used to do that with iran but right now we are not i think we or india needs to transition to nuclear so transitioning to solar is kind of pointless because we have four months in in year where sun is not shining properly during the monsoon season so solar is not the solar should not be a primary option and uh maybe thorium based nuclear reactors can provide india the way to be self sufficient in energy and food and energy self sufficiency is big is big to survive any foreign sanctions anything um america and russia like i said are food and energy self sufficient also india if india was to if india was to become a superpower like united states or like the soviet union what we need is advanced level of industrialization so what we have right now with india uh, with india and also with china is low to medium level of industrialization what is advanced level of industrialization you ask advanced level of industrialization means uh aircraft ma- uh jet engine manufacturing it means semiconductors biggest one is semiconductors and semiconductor supply chain is really really global so semiconductors that are designed in united states by companies like intel nvidia apple and qualcomm amd and they are manufactured by samsung in south korea and tsmc in taiwan primarily tsmc tsmc makes about 60% of global semiconductors that go all into all of modern electronics but semiconductor production is just first step south korea and taiwan are just first or last step depending on where you ask or what what where you look at they need uv lithography machines which come which which come from asml which is a dutch company or netherlands uh, and for that lithography machines for asml it needs parts from zeiss which is a german company and zeiss needs parts and raw materials from various other countries so semiconductors are global semiconductors have this global near global supply chain and america just controls the supply chain america can just cut off any of these countries and decide you know what we are going to design semiconductors in united states and we are also going to manufacture semiconductors in united states some uh, tsmc i think few months ago set up a factory in united states i think i think it was in arizona if i remember correctly or wisconsin i i don't know but in one of these countries and india's semiconductor situation is terrible india's semiconductor situation is terrible uh, recently there was contract signed 
बिटवीन वे वेदांता एंड फॉक्सकॉन बट इज फॉक्सकॉन समय कंडक्टर प्रोड्यूसर नो नॉट बिगेस्ट मे बी वील गेट द मोस्ट कॉमन ट्वेंटी एट नैनोमीटर समय कंडक्टर्स इट्स बेटर दैन नथिंग बट वी आर जस्ट वी आर जस्ट embarrassing the far behind china who is embarrassingly far behind america in terms of semiconductor self sufficiency it's better than nothing but we have a long long way to go towards becoming a superpower india needs to at least manufacture semiconductors the cutting edge semiconductors like south korea and taiwan if it wants to be an advanced industrialized nation if it wants to escape that middle income trap that china is currently stuck in and many other many other countries are currently stuck in if india wants to escape that if india wants to become major economic power india has to get its hands on semiconductors and achieve near level near complete self sufficiency in semiconductors if it wants to become a super power or if it wants to become an advanced industrialized nation like usa like germany like japan like taiwan and south korea of course united states is self sufficient they just have outsourced it to europe and east asia uh the the technology sector so ohio disaster there was a train derailment situation that leaked a lot of chemicals a lot of toxic chemicals phosgene gas i think there w- was leaked pvc was leaked and because the train was derailed and they decided to get rid of the chemicals through controlled explosion I don't know how you control explosion you just start an explosion you can start an explosion how do you control that explosion so far there has been no response from US government Biden did not visit this disaster area this is in a town called East East Palestine in Ohio state ex president Donald Trump has announced that he'll visit this town media media is completely there's a complete media blackout about this disaster most of it most of that news it's coming from twitter media has covered it a little bit but not as much here is another one environmentalists are silent on this disaster i haven't heard a lot or anything from greta thunberg or any of the environmentalist activists or organization or just stop oil or all these activist organizations they are silent they are silent on this situation this is <clears throat> many people consider this a chernobyl level disaster and it could possibly be there are, there's a huge cloud that can be seen from aeroplanes over this town called east palestine and the transport minister of usa he hasn't done much uh he hasn't talked much i think i think he talked about it a little bit and it's making jokes about it and this train derailment disaster was apparently a result of removing of regulation by former president donald trump and not reinstating that safety regulation or lack of reinstating of that safety regulation by current president joe biden so here's 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 my here's a question for you so america has food shortages many of the plants are on fire and eggs eggs there was egg shortage for few months and maybe there will be few uh food shortage later on 
another thing is under Biden that humiliating withdrawal from Afghanistan. So first is food shortages, second is humiliating withdrawal from Afghanistan, and third is an environmental disaster. And all this after bloated military budget, uh, American military being overextended, sky high level of inflation. Here's a question for you. Is Joe Biden the new Mikhail Gorbachev? Okay. If you remember in the Soviet Union in 80s, or if you read or heard about the Soviet Union in or what was happening in the Soviet Union in 80s. There were food shortages. There was a humiliating withdrawal from Afghanistan. There was an a, environmental disaster at Chernobyl. And what happened? And all, the, all these things happened after the Soviet military was overextended and Soviet ruble was just sky high. It, they just printed a lot of so, rubles. And we saw that Soviet Union collapsed or we know that Soviet Union collapsed after all this. So same things are happening right now with money printing causing inflation, American military being overextended. There was a little bit of food shortage. I don't know if still there is food shortage. I don't know. But there was a humiliation in Afghanistan and now an environmental disasters. Is history repeating itself and is Joe Biden the new Mikhail Gorbachev? So other topics this week. There was a population control law. There was a, ru a rumor or talks about population control law being uh, will be introduced in India. Last time this happened was under Prime Minister Indira Gandhi who lost the election and and a most famous example of this population control is China's one child policy and we know that it has led to the demographics crisis so my question is what is Indian government thinking about this are they going to limit population like you should have two kids at least or you should have maximum of, maximum of two kids or something like that. I think they should limit birth, childbirth to a maximum of four or five per couple. But if they are going to introduce a population control law, they should at least add a limit of minimum two children per couple otherwise that demographics disaster we, we are going to witness in East Asia China Japan Korea uh, South Korea Taiwan and we are going to is witness that in Russia in Central Asia in all of Europe and in all of North America which is why Europe and North America are just letting in all the immigrants to make sure that their population does not collapse, right? It's not just cheap labor. It's not just, you know, we love immigrants, we multiculturalism, blah, blah, blah. That's just what they tell people. The real reason why they want immigrants is one, it provides cheap labor and two, because of really, really bad population demographics. I hope they are not introducing a population control law and if they are, I hope they make at least two children mandatory for, for each couple. They can introduce limit on maximum uh, children per couple, like maybe five children per couple or four children per couple. But if they are going to introduce those limits, they should also introduce limits have minimum of two children by a certain age for women and for men. For women, I think the age to have 
healthy cup healthy babies is 35 and for men that age is 45 if i remember correctly they should just add minimum of two in that uh, population control law if they are going to introduce it is george soros funding regime change in india george soros promised like one or two billion dollars that he is going to fund to get rid of modi to introduce democracy which is a strange one right democracy as defined by the west is whatever the western oligarchs please is called democracy if they want something done they just have to add voting or introduce some some legal changes to country that they want to bring democracy in aka to exploit that country for oligarchs in the west that's the george soros definition of democracy that's not what he'll say about democracy but that's what george soros wants he wants regime change or government change or whatever you want to call it he wants to get rid of modi and here's another thing about this man he's famous for crashing currencies of thailand of malaysia and i think i think also Jap japan and his biggest victory was in 1998 or 1999 where he crashed british pound yes this man george soros crashed the british pound how is he not evil how is he not in jail we, well he's an oligarch that's simple he lives in new york he's hungarian i think he's banned in his birth country or birthplace hungary <clears throat> i think he's banned there and he lives in united states he's in 90s why do you care why, like at at 90 years old why do you care what government they have why do you care at 90 about what kind of government some foreign country has right he's an hungarian american why why does he care about a cut uh about government in india see this is what this is what this is what they say about democracy by real democracy i think it should be up to indian people to decide whether they want modi or not if they want someone else it should not be in hands of western oligarchs like george soros like screw you screw you mr soros just retire already okay so bbc office in india is raided this comes after few weeks after bbc released a documentary on prime minister modi it was slammed and by prime minister uh, by government as propaganda it it might be propaganda so this is the thing about bbc in india they they publish facts but they also publish fiction so it's how much of that documentary is fact and how much of that documentary is fiction how much of that documentary is propaganda i don't know i i don't have any i don't have proper access to that documentary to review that documentary but anyway recently the office in, in india was raided by income tax department and apparently they have dodged taxes of 50 or 60 million dollars or something in they have dodged taxes in india bbc so this this bbc which is owned by british monarchy it is forced on and subsidized by british taxpayers is dodging taxes in a foreign country it's it's a developing story but it's hilarious 
इट वॉज बैंड मल्टीपल टाइम्स इन बी बी सी वॉज बैंड मल्टीपल टाइम्स इन इंडिया इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटीज एंड इन नाइनटीन एटीज विद इट गेट बैंड आई डोंट नो आई डोंट थिंक सो बट आई थिंक द टाइमिंग इज ऑफ दैट डॉक्यूमेंट्री इज इनक्रेडिबल दैट इट्स इट्स बीन रिलीज जस्ट वन ईयर बिफोर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर इलेक्शन मे बी इट्स अ को इंसिडेंस बट मे बी देर समथिंग एल्स I think that propaganda against India, or against, or propaganda in India against the current government, the Modi government, will intensify massively in this year and also in the next year to get rid of Modi. And here's the thing: neither the West nor China wants a strong India. of course they are going to try and get rid of prime minister modi because he has whatever your concerns on modi or whatever your criticisms on modi when it comes to culture whether you might be liberal or you might dislike modi but even you have to agree that prime minister modi has taken india on a whole new level in in terms of ge- foreign relations and geopolitics and he will transform india this decade and he will make india massively stronger this has been admitted by i think i i saw a video of, of brookings institution about this that modi will make india strong he will develop india and this was admitted in before like 2014 i think when modi was chief minister uh, was running as the prime minister of india he was elected in 2014 that propaganda will intensify i'm not saying i'm not saying you should put for modi i am not saying you should vote against modi it's up to you um if you are indian if you are outside if you are outsider if you are if you are not indian you shouldn't care honestly it's none of your business well that's it for today's episode thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you guys soon i'll see you folks soon